a very good morning uh, i think my okay yeah so at the outset i would like to thank my dear friend uh, sheetal brar for including me in her course so i'm going to talk about uh, the topography per se uh, so let's start uh, why it is important to do uh, a good evaluation before any refractive surgery so this gentleman 38 year old had come to our uh, clinic with decreased vision he had given the history of lasik done some 7 8 years back and his pre operative refraction was minus 1 with 0.75 and minus 1 with minus 1 cylinder in the left eye not a great uh, pre operative uh, refractive error his current refraction is minus 1 at 60 and 69 vision left eye his vision is 66 but he is not very happy with it uh what he showed me was a piece of paper in which written was pre op packy and the and these keratometry readings although there was no topography so when i did his topography this is a frank keratoconus lasik ectasia in uh, right eye and there is a subtle cone in the left eye subtle ectasia in the left eye also so that's the reason why it is important to do a thorough evaluation and read your topography as well because the incidence of the uh, of lasik post lasik ectasia and which is true even for smile that you do get post smile ectasia is also is still there so it is important for us to know whether our patient is eligible or not so i will just uh, skip this slide and we'll jump on to the topography so before going into this what is topography and what is tomography so basically topography is something like a 2d image where uh, it placido disk is used and there is it depends on the principle of reflecting these images of placido rings on the cornea so basically we are studying the anterior corneal surface and teofilm out here vis a vis tomography is something like a 3d corneal image where you are studying anterior posterior curvature of the uh, cornea anterior surface posterior surface and whatever is there in between and little bit behind it so the ones which we use are uh, nowadays opscan is almost kind of i would say obsolete so the ones which we use is the shimflug based which is pentacam and the other ones which are used uh, by most of us is cirrus and galilee which is shimflug plus placido disk based and something which is even superior than this tomography is oct based tomography so as we can see there are multiple scans and cross sectional images in shimflug as well as oct in placido disk it is just a single shot so as i said that it is important uh, to know the posterior surface because sometimes what happens is whenever there is an early cone or early uh, uh, ectasia the epithelial will mask these early cones so we need to see because lot of changes happen at the posterior side first so it is very important for us to know the posterior surface so what we are going to talk about is essentially tomography and not topography so if you look at this map this is what we generally get it on any pentacam or cirrus map this is a pentacam map which are the four we get a curvature map which you can go and change it into sagittal tangential or posterior whatever you want there are anterior posterior elevation and there is a global packet thickness now curvature map is there are axial map and there is tangential axial will give you a overall pattern of the cornea so it will kind of differentiate it from normal to abnormal and tangential will give you slightly more details so it might give you a pattern of the disease so one needs to know on curvature map what we need to see there are different types of topography maps like a round and oval comes to normal but the rest all and the symmetric bow tie is normal rest all inferior steepening asymmetric bow tie symmetric bow tie but with a skewing like this map is abnormal and we need to take care of it so the red flags by pentacam they have some uh, values which are given to us is one is inferior irregular steepening anterior elevation more than 12 microns posterior elevation more than 17 microns and a thinnest point which is slightly away plus all these four points should coincide with each other it should be that where your steepening is your anterior and posterior elevation should be there and your thinnest point also should be there it cannot be that thinnest point is somewhere else and your steepening is somewhere else that, that means it is not ectasia or keratoconus you are dealing with and you need to get into the detail now whenever we are talking about tomography we need to understand what is the concept of a reference surface mind you every reference surface for every cornea is measured for that particular cornea so it is basically a reference surface is measured from your own cornea and this this concept has come from a terrain topography where the sea level is the reference surface so we also need some kind of a reference surface for us to compare that what is steeper and what is flatter so a machine kind of will 
take all your corneal points into consideration and have a reference surface although there is no consensus which reference surface is better by default pentacam uses uh, the sphere one the cirrus will use the torical uh, toric uh, uh, spheroid ones so it depends you can go and change and actually can learn a lot by changing all these things onto the machine and play with your machine and decide so pentacam also has bad d which uses enhanced uh, best fit sphere so now what is enhanced best fit sphere as i said a normal best fit sphere it is measured from your 9 mm cornea all the points are considered so if your cornea is steep your reference surface will also be steeper if your cornea is flatter your reference point will be flatter so what is the principle behind enhanced bfs is what it does is basically it will exclude the points 4 mm from the thinnest point so this is if you, this is your thinnest point you just draw a circle which is 4 mm around the thinnest point where if you have a keratoconus your steepest points will be there and that it excludes so basically the steepest points will be excluded so the resultant enhanced reference surface will be flatter now how is it useful is if you put this flatter surface slightly on an early cone your early cone will get accentuated but if you don't use the enhanced best fit sphere because your reference surface is steep maybe you will miss out on the early cones that doesn't that the, because your normal cornea will not have these very steep and very flat point even the enhanced best fit sphere will be something very similar to a normal best fit sphere in a normal cornea so this is what everyone is very used to the bad d display is the first two are with your normal best fit sphere second ones are with your enhanced best fit sphere and third one is difference between the two so basically it help us to evaluate the early cones now on the right side uh, there is a pachymetry session which you have seen that there is ctsp pti basically what it means is there it gives us there are concentric rings 22 rings which are drawn from the thinnest point towards the periphery so it basically tells us how a pachymetry is behaving from the thinnest point towards the periphery so if in keratoconus it will be the thinnest point and the periphery is normal so it will go below your normal standard is exactly opposite in something like a fuchs endothelial dystrophy where your cornea is edematous so your center is also edematous and thick so the difference in the center the thinnest point or whatever it is to the periphery is not so much so the graph will go superiorly so that is how you can even pick up early fuchs endothelial dystrophy on topography and maybe avoid doing refractive surgeries in such cases now you must have come across all these d's they are different this thing the one which i like is the dy which is displacement of the thinnest point and the main d is not a parameter but it's just a regression analysis so you give little bit importance because it is just analysis from whatever normative data machine has it it is from the caucasian eyes mainly so just don't go on that asymmetric indices i will avoid it right now for the uh, time purpose but there are a lot of asymmetric indices the more important one is the uh, superior inferior asymmetry indices which are important now we all must be used to these particular maps also these are serious maps they look different because the color maps are slightly different so colors look different but essentially if you start reading it they are very very similar to what we have discussed where you have your global packy you have curvature maps the curvature maps in serious are better because it uses placido for the curvature maps and for the elevation it uses the shimflug images they have a keratoconus screening where they use the symmetry index of front and back basically it gives us a vertical asymmetry it will give you the highest point of the ectasias on front and back and bcvf and bcvb basically what machine considers is is your cone starts at inferior temporal region so it basically will manifest a lot of coma trefoil and spherical aberrations so these three things they'll consider and they'll give you in your keratos summary whether it is a normal suspect or a frank keratoconus there's something which i really like in cirrus's keratoconus sum summary if you look at this last image which is black and white is the same thing what they are showing is all the points so if you are dealing with an ectasia all those points like your thinnest packy anterior elevation every thing will congregate together if these points are scattered that means you're not dealing with something like a keratoconus or ectasia so there are a lot of things which even the serious machine gives it also gives us the uh, ctsp and the pti charts so this is a uh, this is a topography where if you see it 
the curvature maps look fine the anterior elevation map looks fine but there is a subtle cone in the posterior elevation which we would have missed in a normal topography but if you do tomography you can pick up and avoid a refractive surgery in such a case now if you look at this particular case elevation maps as well as curvature maps look normal but what is little abnormal is if you look at uh, uh, the pachymetry map there is a lot of displacement of the thinnest point so that is again a red flag for us to observe this thing whether it is normal or whether it is progressing into ectasia and maybe avoid it and if it does not progress it maybe go ahead with a surface ablation or something like that again this is a case where the curvature and anterior elevation is normal but if you see the posterior elevation it shows the posterior elevation which matches with your thinnest point so again the other eye had a proper cone so this these are the cases which we can miss it on just a curvature topography or a placido topograph topography this is again a case uh, this is a serious map where you can see the inferior steepening irregular uh, bow tie but the elevation looks normal curvature maps on uh, serious always gives you a pretty good picture so in such a case again you should have the things less all doesn't look very abnormal but this is a patient of vkc and there is a history of rubbing so you should observe such patients rather than going for refractive surgery because you may land up in a problem if you observe and things are not changing if his vkc is controlled and now he doesn't have any rubbing problems you may go ahead with surgery after observing him for a year or two or maybe little more and go with surface ablation so there are a lot of things which will give us subtle uh subtle clues like this particular patient if you just go for the curvature map it looks like an inferior steepening but that is because basically this is a case if you look at the pachymetry map it's all thick it is a fuchs endothelial dystrophy case and not actually a cone so there are a lot of things if you look at the ctsp map it is going uh, up so to summarize this topo tomography is must for new age pre refractive surgery evaluation evaluation curvature map elevation maps and thinnest points should considered together and not separately posterior elevation and global package shows early changes and bad d enhances subtle cones because of the enhanced reference surface thank you so much